All right, this one's gonna be an interesting one. I'm so glad that you guys are here and ready to talk about this. We're gonna be talking about The Chosen, responding to some criticism that we've seen over, well, the last little while, uh, just about the <laughs> about the Chosen and some, some thoughts that people have. So we're gonna be responding to some of those and just kind of talking to you guys today. So please let me know where you're from in the in the uh, chat right now. Let us, uh, you know, have some conversation. That's what these lives are all about, about talking to you guys. So we really wanna do that tonight and just uh, chill. Let us know if you have any questions. And of course, um, please subscribe, like, share, send this out to a friend that might be interested in, in watching this tonight. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, here we go into responding to the criticism of uh of the chosen <laughs> so here we go all right hello my name is brandon <laughs> welcome to the snipe life where we look at creativity through the lens of christianity and yeah like i said today's gonna be a very interesting one starting it off right though denny automatically right off the bat um giving us a super chat wow amazing thank you so much oh and right after that jeffrey thank you as well um, anything that's donated to this channel obviously is um, is a huge help to us. We've had a bunch of people that have been helping us out recently. And so you can see we're upgrading our studio slowly but surely. We even have a little sneak peek for those of you that uh, are watching our live stream. And don't be fooled. I am not alone today. <laughs> we are both here. The Snipe Life is me, Brandon Snipe, along with my wife, Vanessa, who is here with me. Are you going to say anything? Not really. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> um, I might be a little too gainy. Yeah, you're we're adjusting bad. things. We're yeah. uh, we just set yep. this up, and the camera decided to take a nap. And yeah, <laughs> yep. so. it's all good though. No worries for sure. We figured it out. We're here almost on time, and we're ready to roll. So <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa is going to be kind of our community manager today. So if you guys have any questions, she's going to try to respond to you guys. So please reach out to her if you have any questions that you want her to put up on screen or anything like that. And then um, I'm going to do most of the talking tonight. So we're going to see how this works, this new kind of setup here, and uh, kind of play around with it a little bit. So, all right. <laughs> just a uh, shout out to Timothy. He gave a yes, Timothy as well. As well. Thank you so much. Let me just say uh, hi to a few people and, and uh, Vanessa. Feel free to, to shout out anybody you want to. Donna Anderson, not my mom. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> as always, welcome. I saw Denise earlier. Um, I saw Georgie, epic Georgie earlier. That was awesome. M likes noodles, of course. Uh, Denny from Charleston, of course. Sue, Sandy, PA Layman. We see a lot of these people all the time, but I want to shout out especially Peg R. Um, we have channel members here on the channel. We also have patrons. And so if you guys want to join us as a, a patron or a channel member, you can do that really easily on YouTube, at least by clicking that join button. And then in the description below, you can find our Patreon links and stuff like that. So this is just another way to, to help us out to keep this ministry going. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about ministry tonight uh, and kind of the definition of that a little bit, too. So we'll jump into that. But you can see Peg R is actually one of our channel members. You get that little badge next to your name when you become a channel member. Um, so yeah, a lot of people that I recognize today. So so just want to say, hey, hey to you guys. Well, let's get into it without further ado. Let's jump into um, what's going to be an interesting uh, video here. <laughs> We're going to be talking about and responding to some of the criticisms of the chosen in general. And so for us, um, you know, we have been following the chosen since pretty much the beginning and, you know, watched season one was really hyped for season two. But I have also seen that there has been a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, criticism in sometimes hatred um, of the chosen. And, um, and so let me set some ground rules for this conversation. Okay. No matter where you are in your journey, um, in your walk with Christ, no matter where you are uh, in your journey in the chosen, whether you've just found it or you've been a fan since the very beginning, um, we are not going to have any hatred in the comments. We're not going to have any, um, anybody talking down to one another. Even if there's someone here tonight that does not like the chosen, um, that is not a fan of the chosen and thinks that it's blasphemy, right? We're not going to be mean to them. We're not going to spout hatred because we are followers of Christ. So we're going to set a precedent, right? As we go through tonight, we want to set that precedent to be followers of Christ, to be kind, right? To be patient. And so we're going to, we're going to dive into that. If you see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my notes because I want to try to make sure everything's kind of clear in my head as I go along. But here's ground rule number two. The chosen isn't perfect. It's not. You know how I know? 
because it's made by man, right? <laughs> and so anything made by man is not going to be 100% perfect. And so there are things to criticize about The Chosen. We're going to talk about some of those tonight. So I want you to have an open mind. Remember that we're talking about a TV show here, and, and we're going we're gonna to really dive into that. And third, but not, not least, obviously, the Bible should be our kind of standard, right, for everything, not a TV show. So as we go into this tonight, as we go into this discussion, let's have that kind of framework in mind as we talk about everything that we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to really talk about two or three main criticisms of The Chosen, and, uh, and we're going to get into it here. So uh, yeah, let's play that opening, uh, that opening video. And uh, here's kind of a, a, a idea of what we're responding to tonight, at least a little bit of it. Thus, we conclude. The Chosen has chosen the wrong Jesus, a false one, in order to deceive the unsuspecting and to tickle the ears of them that won't endure sound doctrine, but want what sounds good, what tickles their ears. This video is going to be a warning against the TV show called The Chosen. The warning is that you should avoid it. Don't watch it. Tell other people not to watch it. The Chosen is a fad right now. It is the, it is the thing of the moment. It was, it's like, it's akin to the purpose-driven life. You know, more than a decade ago, I think of uh, the prayer of Jabez, and then you, everybody remember those bracelets that everybody wore that said WWJD. That was a fad, man. I made a video about an interview done on YouTube between Haley Bieber, wife of Justin Bieber, and Yvonne Orji. Yvonne Orji, for those who don't know, is an actress on an HBO show called Insecure. She was also invited to do a short video advertising for the show The Chosen because she's a self-acclaimed Christian. Now, I'm not sure to what degree they know about Yvonne's TV show, but I'm very concerned that the people who make The Chosen, which is supposed to be a family-friendly Christian program, would invite this woman to advertise for their project. So this is what we're going to be talking about today or tonight or this morning, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> For me, it's tonight. And so we're going to be talking about um, kind of some of these criticisms. And I'm going to tell you up front, there are some of these criticisms that I slightly agree with. And so we're going to be talking through that. We're going to be working through it. And, um, and I don't think this is going to be a super long live stream. But if you have questions at any point, please leave them in, um, in the chat especially you channel members. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave a little Quintus emote before and after so we make sure that we see that question uh, so that we can answer anything to the best of our ability tonight. So um, let's start from the top. Number one, the first criticism that I hear, this is probably the biggest one um, out of all of them, is that the chosen is not biblical. Now we see this a lot, right? In, in a lot of different areas. Now, we hear people saying that The Chosen is adding events to the Bible. Um, they're changing timelines, right? Uh, they're putting words in Jesus' mouth that weren't there. And then they also say that this is blasphemy. Um, so let's walk through that a little bit and kind of feel that out. So The Chosen um, is a TV show, right, made by Dallas Jenkins. Um, and <clears throat> it is, um, you know, it does take reference from the Bible, right? That's the source material for this show right? For the most part. But at the same time, we do get episodes like episode three of season one and two. We get episodes like um, episode four of season two, right? Where things are changed. I mean, let's take a look at episode four of season two. This is a great episode that has a lot of biblical narrative, but also a lot of that biblical narrative is changed, right? It's definitely not exactly as it appears in scripture. And so we see as, you know, Jesse, who is the, the man who is lame at the well, right? At the, uh, not the well, but the pool of Bethesda, right? He's lame there and he's been there for a long time. We know that from scripture and we saw that and all of that was pretty accurate, but he's brothers with Simon the Zealot, right? And for us, like this has, this has never like been something that we've thought about before. Now, in my opinion, I thought they did a really good job with this, even though it's not a biblical portion of, of scripture, Right. Um, I thought the episode itself was amazing. The relationship that they created between Simon the Zealot and, um, and Jesse was, it was beautiful, right? 
And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's this thing that, yes, it did not happen. Most likely, right? 99.99999% it did not happen. But in my opinion, it's still okay that it's in the chosen. Why is that? And we're going to talk about that in a second. But I want to give a few more examples. So episode three of season one, we see that, you know, Jesus is in the wilderness before his ministry starts. And he's with all of these children. But we never hear the story in the scripture. It's just not there, right? We see as Mary Magdalene, right, is one of the first people that Jesus interacts with in this show. But we know that that's not the case, right? We know that that's not what happened. The timeline is way different than that. Um, the show does not show the 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, right? And so it's there's some of these things where the timeline is shifted and it feels very strange. So how do you guys feel about that? And is that okay with you? <clears throat> and then I would say also, um, a lot of people have uh, this, like, like, so the guy from the beginning, I forget his name off the top of my head, but the third guy in that video, he's talking about how the chosen is a fad, right? And how all of these Christian people are just being led into this, this new fad that, that is the chosen. And so for him, you know, he, he did a couple of um, uh, kind of um, descriptions of like saying it's similar to something else. And so he said that it's kind of like the, the purpose driven life or the prayer of Jabez or the bracelets, WWJD bracelets. Right. And that it's a fad and it's something that, that, you know, Christians are just really hyped about right now. And I want to talk about that for a second too. So it being a fad within itself, I think is slightly true. I think that a lot of people are getting excited about the chosen right now. But the difference between the chosen and something like a purpose driven life or pray of Jabez is that this is not like a, a life altering um, uh, way of life, if that makes sense. It's not telling you how to live life. It's just a show. And so as we dive into this subject, right, here's really what I'm having you do. I want you to have a shift of frame of reference, if that makes sense. So here's the chosen, right? And here's the Bible. And I want you to directly separate those in your mind. And now on the Snipe Life, if you guys have been watching us for a while, you know that we do this in almost every single episode, right? We talk about what the Chosen does because the Chosen is a beautiful, beautiful piece of art, right? But we also talk about what actually happened in the scripture, right? And so there is a chasm between these two because the Chosen is not scripture, right? And so there's something that does become dangerous, right? And these critics, I think they're they're all pulling from this same thing when they're talking about the 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 biblicalness, right, of the chosen. Because here's the fear, and let me explain this to you. Here's the fear, right? Um the fear is that someone is going to watch this show and then they're going to basically get an understanding of Christ that is not directly from scripture. And thusly it could be wrong, especially since the show is being created by human people, right? It's, it can be um, criticized, right? Um, do you have something to say, babe? Yeah, just, I, there's a bunch of comments that I like, you ask questions and then people are actually responding. So I okay, just so, wanted to. Yeah, we can definitely answer some of those as we go through, just put them up on, on screen. Yeah, I like uh, Timothy's point here that how many times have the creators have chosen said that we aren't following the Bible precisely. So, yeah, yeah I think that's a point that you're trying to make. Absolutely. And then Pegar um, did the Quintus thing that you said. Nice, epic. <laughs> Any TV show should never be substitute for scripture. The chosen team states this. Hopefully it guides people towards scripture. Yeah, yep. exactly. And yep. I feel like that's super important because we should be in our word. Like, that's the only way we're supposed to... Uh, get to know god right like it's yeah you can continue with that if you want babe yeah absolutely i think i think that's 100 percent correct and um <laughs> i think that we just get this all mixed up right and uh there's another critic who i've watched who again any of these critics i might agree with some of what they've said and there's a lot of them that i don't agree with a lot of what they've said and this is actually one of them. I don't agree with a lot of things that, that this guy says, but we're going to play his video next and kind of say, nah, this is a pretty good point. So let's watch this. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there is another issue that I don't think anybody brought up 
that I think is worthy of all of our consideration for ourselves and especially for our kids. Now, whether it was delivered well or not, nevertheless, I think even Phil Vischer, he even pointed out that portraying Bible characters as vegetables, it, 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 it can do something. Now, with the veggie tales, it might be teaching the kids it's just kind of a play, and they change the details enough where the story of Jonah wasn't an actual historical event. There's dangers in doing these types of things. I'm not saying disqualifiers, but there are considerations in when we present something in the Bible in a way that isn't entirely biblical. Not sinful per se, but can have some consequences. If your kids watch something like The Chosen, and that's totally up to you whether you do or don't, is it possible that they will think the embellishments are biblical? That they'll be learning oh, that's what happened. Why, why don't I have that in my Bible? Or they might bring that into their understanding of a theological position, or it might forever be there as something that they think Jesus really did, or something that he said when he didn't. That's going to be a decision that you have to make, Mom and Dad, which is why I would encourage you when you watch a show like this, bring your Bible to the party. Bring your Bible to the party. I think that's that's number one, right? And I don't agree with everything that Wretched Radio says, um, absolutely. I don't agree with everything that you say in chat, <laughs> right? I don't agree with everything that Dallas Jenkins says. And guess what? That's okay, <laughs> right? Um, but I do think that he makes a really good point here. If If there is a danger, right? If there is a danger for someone to come in and take the chosen as scripture, then that is a danger, right? And I know that the chosen has done the best that they possibly can to tell people this is not scripture. You should not be studying this as your quiet time, right? Um, but I, I still think that that danger is there. Although I think that the good outweighs the bad heavily. Because even for me, right? As I watch the chosen, I find myself wanting to dig more and more and more into the word, right? And all of my friends, I've seen the same result. We, we actually just had, um, this is a future video that you guys are going to be looking forward to for sure. Cause I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, but we, we are going to put out a video basically with our friends watching the chosen for the first time and seeing how they react and seeing how, you know, they, they go through the emotions of, of the first, you know, of, of the, of the seasons. And so it's so interesting to me because we got, we got through the first four episodes with them. And to see them, how excited they were to really dive deep into the scriptures and, and saying, you know, wow, I learned so much about the culture, about the history, about what's been going on, right? Um, but they they weren't talking about every piece of it, right? They were, they were talking about the historical accuracy of the chosen. They were talking about the cultural accuracy of the chosen. They were talking about the specific biblical parts of the chosen, right? And the conversations that we were having because of the chosen. Now, if The Chosen had never come out, we wouldn't have had those conversations, right? A, a bunch of people uh, wouldn't have had this kind of relighting of the fire to dig into the word. And so I think the risk of someone taking something out of context or thinking that The Chosen is what actually happened is well outweighed by the good that comes from people really, really digging into their Bible and and making this a... a a match to light that fire again for them, if that makes sense. Any more questions while I've been talking? Yeah, so... Uh, You're a little bit loud still. They were saying you can pull it down a little bit. Say what now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, I use the chosen as a way to research the Bible and make reference between the words in the show and chapter and verse, um, yeah. just like you were just saying. So I, that's why I pulled that one up. Um, Georgie, Bible first. After that comes other things like the chosen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And uh, I, I like what Jules says here. You can't please all people all the time. God is not in a box. Absolutely. Too bad there are just too many closed minds. God's mind is way above ours. Absolutely. God is aware of all this. Give people slack. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so. <clears throat> again, we're switching our mind, right? The chosen is not scripture. So if the chosen is not scripture, then we should not treat it like it's scripture, right? That means we don't put the weight of scripture upon it. So now that being said, right, we do want it to be as scripturally accurate as possible. 
But when things happen, right, like timelines being changed or things being added to the story that may not be exactly like scripture, we have to take those things with a grain of salt, right? And we have to walk through that with the understanding of scripture. So we're looking at the chosen through the lens of scripture. And that's how we understand the chosen in the first place, right? It's not that the chosen is dictating our reading of scripture because that would be extremely extremely bad right because then we'd be complaining that certain things aren't in the scripture that we've seen in the chosen if the chosen is your true sight right so we're trying to flip that around we're trying to make you understand that you need to watch the chosen through the eyes of scripture and have it be there now um that's kind of the main main point there with with it's not biblical and I would say to that to that criticism, I agree. It's not 100% biblical. There are things that are different from scripture within the chosen. Does that disqualify it from being an amazing work of art that I believe Christ can be glorified through? Absolutely not. And here's why. Because if I take a, take a pen, right, <clears throat> and I draw a picture of Jesus, does that disqualify my picture of Jesus just because it doesn't look like the real him, right? If I watch a show of Veggie Tales, right, and I learn something about God, does that disqualify the thing that I learned because it was a vegetable that taught it to me, right? Now, one thing that one of these one of these critics said was that any any form of Jesus, you know, that is shown on a TV or a show or in a book or anything is considered an idol um, because we're worshiping that thing, and I don't necessarily agree with that at all, right? Um, otherwise every song about Jesus, every movie, every show, every portrayal, every image of Christ, um, you know, that is in the world would be considered an idol and considered evil. And I, I don't think that at all. Um, I really truly think that, um, that this can be used by God to glorify God. And I, I trust Dallas that that is his intention as well. And so we're going to talk a little bit later about some different denominational stuff too, but I hope that clears up that point that yes, the chosen isn't biblical, but we're looking at the chosen with a scriptural lens in front of us. We're not just taking everything at face value because that can be extremely, extremely dangerous. So that's number one, biblical, uh, biblical view of the chosen, <clears throat> how it's not biblical. Now, the second main thing, and I know there's a lot of criticism, so if you have one, um, please bring it up, and, and Vanessa will bring it up to me, <clears throat> um, if you have a criticism that you want to talk about. But the second main criticism that I've, that I've kind of seen, and there's a couple things kind of wrapped up in this, but it's that actors and crew um, are not Christian. Um, and, <laughs> and so let me explain this out a little bit. <clears throat> so a lot of the actors in the show and a lot of the crew members, right, that are working on the show are not Christian. Does that surprise you? Have, did you know that before? Dallas did, does not make this a uh, requirement as he hires people, right? As he hires people throughout, he does not make it a requirement for them to be a Christian, an evangelical Christian or a Catholic, right? <clears throat> um, or anything else. And so this is a... Uh, a big part of where the chosen is. And a lot of people get upset about this, right? But here's kind of where, <laughs> here's here's how the chosen describes itself. Let's start there. How does the chosen describe itself? The chosen describes itself as a multi-season show about the life of Jesus, right? And his disciples in the area of the Galilee. So that's what this show is about, right? Um, and, and so with that in mind, right, we have to understand that this show is one made by humans, right? This show is a, a, a show about the life of Jesus. The way that even Dallas Jenkins has talked about this, right, is he equates it to like a show like Vikings, like a historical drama, right? He, he doesn't say that this is your Bible study show, right? And so as we go from the beginning, like we have to understand that this is we're changing our frame of mind again, because most of us go into a Christian project. Right. And again, it's like even that frame of mindset. Is this a Christian project? Let's think about that. But the show within itself. Right. 
is not associated. Dallas has even said this himself. It's not associated with Christians. It's not associated with Catholics. It's not associated with Mormons, right? Um, It's a show about the life of Christ. That's what it is, period, full stop. And so we have to understand that cast, crew, actors, they're all humans. And what does that mean? It means that they're imperfect. It means that they are going to fail us, right? They're going to do stuff we don't like. So just like that last person was talking about in our, in our intro sequence there, you know, he's talking about how this actress was on, on um, the chosen and she was interviewing people and stuff like that. And how, you know, her roles in other shows were, were really bad and they were things that Christians would not, you know, be um, okay with. Um, But again, if the point of the show is to reach a billion people, if the point of the show is to be the best show about Christ possible, then having an only Christian cast, having an only Christian crew, and having only Christians interact with the show is not going to be what does that, right? And so Dallas knows that. That's why he's marketing the show like he is. That's why he's on TMZ marketing the show, right? He did that before season two. And so this is kind of what I wrote down. Let me read this. (laughs) The Chosen is not a ministry operating out of a church. We have to remember that as we watch the show and as we interact with the show. In fact, Dallas has stated many times that he's not associated with Christians or Christianity or Catholicism or Mormonism. Why? Why does he do this? Because he's not trying to market this as an evangelical Christian product, even though he himself, right, and the writers are evangelical Christians. Again, The Chosen is a multi-season show about the life of, of Christ and his disciples in the area of Galilee. Yes, many members are Christian, right? Dallas himself is an evangelical Christian. Um, But the goal is to make the best show possible. And I don't believe, personally, I don't believe that that if you only hired Christian people, that the show would be as good as it is. Because there are so many talented people, right, that are outside of the Christian sphere. And that's what makes the show so good because Dallas picked the best people not the people that were willing to be on the show because they're Christian. I, ho- I hope that makes sense. And I hope nobody's getting mad at me yet. <laughs> so any other questions that we want to bring up here? There's quite a few. Um, I'm trying to go back. Um, let me put myself up, I guess. <laughs> Hi. Um, God can use anyone. God can use the show to bring actors to Christ. One of the actors could be the one of the 99. Yeah. Mm. What do you think about that, babe? Bran? Wait, re- re-put it up real fast? <clears throat> God can use anyone. God can use the show to bring actors to Christ. Yeah, I absolutely 100% agree with that. But I think that we, we should not be um, goading them into that either. Like, don't be going on their socials and being like, oh, you're going to become a Christian. You're going to become a Christian, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's the way to interact with them either. So be very careful about that. Can you read while I pick? Sure. Dallas has said that on many of the situations, they don't ask if it is supported word for word by scripture, but that it is plausible. Uh, it has always been stated very clearly. Yeah, I agree 100% that this uh, everything in the show so far, in my opinion, could have been plausible. Now, are there things that are way less likely to be plausible, such as Simon the Zealot being brothers with Jesse? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think that that's like a, a possibility, a huge possibility. Um, but it is plausible. It is something that that could be, um, you know, that could could have happened in some crazy world, right? Um, and who knows? With, with the way that God is, maybe it did happen, <laughs> you know? But... Uh, it does not surprise me that all the act that not all the actors are Christian. It is a show. The important thing to me is that the actor represents the character as he or she should in context to the show. Yeah, I 100% agree. If an actor, right, or an actress in the middle of her of her scene or his scene looks to Dallas and said, "I'm not doing this. This is a too Christian scene," right? <laughs> like obviously Dallas would have an issue with that because he's he's written the scenes right from an evangelical Christian point of view, and uh, and so. For him, he's written these scenes and, you know, talked to his roundtable people um, that he has with him and, and everything. And, and he's made these decisions that he's made. And the actors aren't the ones that are going to change that, right? 
um, there may be a few words here and there that they that they kind of add um, for their performance, but they're not going to change the context or the the um, the meat of what Dallas is trying to say there. That's why the chosen is such high quality. They've hired professionals, not Christians. <laughs> yeah, Pat definitely gets this one for sure. Um, yeah, their their talent uh, for their job comes first. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, I can see this in in every situation, right? Like if I'm hiring people because of the color of their skin, I'm not going to get the best people. If I hire people because they have the best talent, then I'm going to get the best people, right? And so I see this in every area of our lives. People do this all the time. So again, we need to prioritize what is the best possible way that we can portray Christ, not, you know, are these people Christian or not? I think, I think that's huge. Um, there was one more, but I keep losing it. Oh, cool. I agree. If we stay in our Christian box, how are we supposed to help more people meet Jesus? We need to spread the good news, not just the chosen. If they are not, uh, even if they are not Christians, I a hundred percent agree. And we've had many conversations with some of the cast and crew and, and Dallas and, you know, and we can, you know, we have these conversations, but sometimes <clears throat> it's a little bit, you know, you have to understand that they're not Christians. And so you have to understand when you're talking about the show as a show or when you're talking about the show in, in lieu of, of scripture as well. I think there's a little bit of a difference there. I like that Dallas said, if you were having Bibles brought into the iron curtain by an unbeliever, would you still want him delivering the Bibles? Just saying. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to share a couple of, couple of other things too. So within this context, right, I think that we have to have a better understanding of what is this show, right? I love the show. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the side of I, I love the show. I like it a lot. I think that it's an amazing show and, and the way that kind of everything is done in this show has been amazing. I mean, from, you know, from the, the cinematography, you know, the lighting of the show, the directing of the show, the acting in the show is impeccable. It's really, really, really good. Right. And not just for a Christian show, it's really good for any show. It's really, really good. And so as we kind of look at this, um, like, we if even if we love the show right we have to separate it just like i said in the beginning the show is not scripture right but we have to be careful as well that the show does not become an idol for us right like we we've had uh some people reach out to us before and talk about <clears throat> you know when they pray to jesus is it okay if they picture jonathan rumi in their head and for me this is a very slippery slope it's it's very dangerous for us to imagine Jonathan Rumi as Jesus, because I know that there are some people in the world that put him up on a pedestal right next to Jesus. And so for me, there has to be a barrier there because the show is amazing. Like I say all the time, this is the best piece of art that I have ever seen in my lifetime as, as a, a picture of Christ and a picture of his disciples, right? Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people can now recite the disciples' names, all 12 of them, because they can imagine them in the show. How many could have said that before? I know I would have had trouble doing that before. I might have been able to do it, but I would have stumbled over a few of them. But now I can think of them immediately, right? Because I have a face to a name. I have a personality that I've been introduced to, right? And then as I read the scripture, I'm looking at the scripture and I'm, I'm lining up the personalities and seeing if those fit. And so far, everything that I'm seeing through the lens of scripture has been pretty close. And historically and culturally, it's been pretty close. But we cannot make the chosen our God. We have to be extremely careful about that. Because there, that is taking it a step too far. So... <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to also share, I know Dallas Jenkins' wife uh, during the the live um, at NRB, uh, when they showed episode six of season two, she says this, <clears throat> she's talking about Dallas and, uh, you know, how amazing the show is and stuff. And she's kind of talking about this experience that they had, um, I think on a mission trip. And she says, I love this man talking about Dallas. I love this show, but who cares? It's a show. Bible preach, right? 
And so again, it's putting that in line. And this is why I, I, I trust Dallas to an extent, right? He's a person. So I know that he's going to fail me at some point. He's going to do something that I don't like in the show. He's going to do something that I don't like that he said in an interview. He's going to do something, right? Because he's a person. He's going to fail. Just like I'm going to fail you. Just like Vanessa's going to fail me. Just like Vanessa's going to fail you, right? Just like I'm going to fail Vanessa. <laughs> We're all going to fail each other. It's a big fail party in humanity, right? That's <laughs> that's who we are. Um, but but you have to be ready, right? And And make sure that everything is grounded in God grounded in the word grounded in scripture and i'm going to challenge some of you because i know a lot of you in our community are are very well grounded in your scripture but i also want to challenge you to really really dig deep because i know some of you um <clears throat> some of you maybe are a little bit off on some things and be okay with it with a challenge to go and read those scriptures I really encourage you to join us every couple of weeks. We're going to be doing a deep dive into John. So next weekend, we're going to be doing another um, episode in our deep dive into, into John chapter three. And so, um, you know, it's going to be interesting for sure. But as we go through John, I encourage you to join along, to, to come along with us and then to see really what the scripture says to dig into that. Yeah. Bible preach from Amanda. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat> We should always strive for excellence in everything we do, and that is why it is so good, using the best talent to get the job done, regardless of being a Christian or not. Yeah. Absolutely. Lots of Bible preach. Bible preach, Bible preach. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Very, very cool. Any other points, love? All right. <clears throat> all right can you hear me so yes 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 i can sorry i was just looking at my notes um here's kind of the last point that i want to make and then please if you have any questions or anything you want to talk about right after this please leave it in the chat and um and we'll be able to pick it up there um and as a reminder you guys can uh send super chats or um or uh, join the channel members or join our Patreon. We'd love to have you guys over there and just be able to talk with you. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, so, <clears throat> so like our Israel trip that's coming up in about a year and a half in February of 2023, um, we're going to be going to Israel with uh, Brandon Robbins and David Tate from now. Let's be honest. And, um, <clears throat> and maybe some other people too that we haven't quite confirmed yet, but uh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a really, really cool trip. We're going to some places that normal trips don't go to. And so we'd love to have you on that trip. There will be details down below. I, ha I haven't been able to put it in the description yet, but once this video goes up after this live, uh, it'll be in the description below and you guys can sign up for that. So um, we got this. Yeah. Um, can't send super chat because it won't let me say I'm Canadian. It's stuck on US only. Can you guys fix that? I don't know. Can we? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can. Um, let me try really fast. Sweet smile. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think something's uh, something's weird. It may have to do with the, the other videos that we showed, but we may have to fight it later, unfortunately. So it looks like we won't be able to um, to do that. But It's okay. Thank it's you awesome. for the thought. That's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No worries. Georgie, um, I do hope The Chosen brings actors to Christ. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I do. I, I I agree as well. I mean, that's the hope, right? That's the hope for, for everyone that's not a Christian on the project is that they would be encountering Christ on a daily basis. And when they say things like when they see things like the Red Sea moments, right, that Dallas talks about where these amazing, amazing things happen when God's doing just these really cool things on set. Like, who else would I want to be there but them to see that, you know, like I have anchors in my life where I know that I know that I know that I've seen God move. But how cool would it be to be able to give those moments to them, you know? And so, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Awesome. So let's dive into this last part. <clears throat> so another challenge to you guys. Um, maybe some of these criticisms weren't enough for you to, to denounce the chosen, right? Um, I know for me, these weren't very strong criticisms because um, I think that I see the chosen differently than maybe a, a, a regular viewer or um, you know, someone who is very critical. Um, 
you know, I see the chosen as what it is. It's a show. And, and, and that does not dictate my view of scripture. My view of scripture dictate, dictates what I see in the show, you know? <clears throat> and so it's a little bit different, but what if we did get to the point, like I said, what if we did get to the point where Dallas does fail you, where something in the show, and I'm, I'm saying this hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, something in the show that is directly, um, you know, in, uh, in opposition <clears throat> to the scripture. What if that happens? Would you be okay walking away from the show? Or is the show so important to you that you still wouldn't walk away? And I want to challenge you with that because I think that a lot of us have this view of the chosen that because God is using it, um, it could never do anything wrong. And I, I want to make sure that you have a clear vision <laughs> as you go into watching the show and as you go into the journey of you interacting with the show, interacting with our channel, right? Everything that me and Vanessa say, I want you to double check it. Everything that Dallas and the Chosen say, I want you to double check it. Because again, the show should not be your foundation. It should not be your scriptural basis. The scriptures should be. So allow that to be the case, right? Make sure that that's the case. And uh, yeah, I just think, <laughs> I, I just think that we have to be careful about it, making it an idol, if that makes sense. So again, let's kind of recap what we talked about um, so far. So we talked about point number one, that the chosen's not biblical. And yeah, to an extent, that is absolutely true. But that's not why we watch The Chosen, right? We watch The Chosen for the biblical aspects of it. We watch The Chosen because of the art of it and because of the historical and cultural evidence that is shown in it, right? How amazing that is. Now, we don't, when we, when we watch The Chosen, we see that Simon the Zealot is the brother of Jesse, who was the man at the Pool of Bethesda. We don't immediately think, oh, that's how it happened. That's the truth. We go back to our scriptures and we read it and we say, hmm, that probably didn't happen. But that was a really cool way of, of talking about that. That that first scene that was like 10 minutes long with no dialogue at all. How amazing was that? In, in season two, episode three, when they did a 15 minute one shot, right? None of that, like very little of that scene, right, was actually in scripture. It's just like a sentence in scripture, actually. But the rest of it was all filled in, right, with whatever Dallas decided to write there. But for, for that, it was a beautiful, amazing piece of cinematography. Seriously, seriously amazing. And so can we appreciate that, right? Can we appreciate the personalities of these disciples, which we, decipher, which we have deciphered through the scriptures, right? Can we appreciate seeing that come to life and come to motion? Um, I think for me, it is, it is so much so much good outweighs the risk of misinterpreting scripture. And then secondly, having people involved in the chosen that are not Christian. Who else would I want to be involved in the story about the life of Christ? Who else would I want to be involved other than the people who can make the show the best that it can possibly be? I want these people here because they can make the show go further than any other Christian show has. And guess what? It already has right? We've already reached over a quarter of a billion people with the show. And so this show, if any, if, if, if any other show in the world, right? If not any other show in the world, this show can reach a billion people to show them the life of Christ and his disciples. And at least a piece of what that looks like, at least enough to get them curious, at least enough to get them to read a Bible for the first time or for the first time in 10 years, right? I, I think it's it's really interesting <clears throat> to think about it that way, to put it in perspective, right? To know that Dallas is not seeing this as a ministry in the sense that we normally think of. And so it's, it's a little bit different. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this in gentleness and respect. This is like the number one verse for apologetics. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Vanessa loves apologetics. So thank you so much for that, Karen. Very, very, very good uh, verse there. And um, yeah, makes a lot of sense for sure. 
All right. I think that's all that I had prepared. So let's just answer some questions, hang out. Um, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> <clears throat> I have had some issues with this show. Can you put up Timothy Kennedy real fast? Uh, Israel trip with you three would be awesome. Yeah, I'm ex I'm super excited about it for sure. <clears throat> I've had some issues with the show, but it's worlds better than 99% of anything else being put out there, including uh, the possessed vegetables <laughs> being shown to children in Sunday school. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think this show is better than Veggie Tales for sure. <clears throat> Shouldn't we always check it, VR Bible? Always. Anything that you do, always check it. Always, 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 always. Yeah. Always keep the chosen Bible separate for sure. Love your John study. Yeah. You guys come and check out the John study. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're hitting into John 3 um, probably next weekend. So we'd love to see you there. Absolutely. <clears throat> I see The Chosen as a Christ-focused TV show. Dallas's heresy would have been a whopper for me uh, to walk away from it. Um, yeah, would, it, it would have to be pretty big. But again, if Dallas came out and said, uh, Jesus is not God, right? <laughs> or Jesus is not man. Or... Um, Jesus loves Mary Magdalene, right? All of these, all of these things, uh, which are not scriptural, right? And again, just to be clear, don't take me out of context, internet. Um, <laughs> this is not thing. These are not things that Dallas has said, right? Um, but if he did ever say those things, then I would, I would have to have a serious think about the chosen, um, and kind of where we stand with that. Uh, God should always have the final word. Uh, amen. Absolutely. Ooh, thanks. Idorado, my boy. <laughs> Good to see you as always. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Jesus has been my Lord for 56 years. A TV show is not going to replace the real. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely, I mean, 100% agree with that. I think what I was saying earlier, the risk is, you know, what if someone... Um, what if someone hasn't been to church in like 20 years or someone who has never been to church and this is their first interaction with, with Christ. Right. And I don't think it's, like I said, I don't think it's too much of a danger that the good doesn't outweigh the bad, you know? Um, but I think the danger is still there, but I trust God right in all of it to show the, the, the truth through it anyway. It's one thing to have strong opinions uh, based on your own experience and understanding. It's a show. If you don't like it, uh, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, you definitely could just not watch the show. And that's cool, too. I actually like what Wretched Radio said. Like I said, I don't agree with everything he says. <laughs> so, um, so I'll say that. But he does say something really good in his video, which is basically like, hey, it's up to you. If you want to watch it, go ahead and watch it. He wasn't a big fan of Jesus's humor. Um, in one of the episodes, Jesus says, um, you know, to Andrew, when he's joking about his dancing, um, Simon Peter says, well, can you fix Andrew's dancing now? And Jesus says, um, even I can't, even the, there are some things even I can't do. Right. And he's joking about that, but wretched radio did not like that at all, uh, because it kind of, you know, hinted towards, um, Jesus couldn't do something, but, um, I don't think that that was the purpose of that scene anyway, but anyway. I loved your meet creepy John deep dive. <laughs> the chosen excellently portrays Jesus's un unconditional love and humanity. I think they do a great job. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Brendan and Vanessa for taking su on such a tricky subject. I hope, I hope this uh, went well for you guys. I hope you liked this one and, uh, and, and got some, some good stuff out of it. Um, just a kind of a, a different way of thinking um, as we walk through. So. The character of mother Mary in the chosen contradicts Catholic belief in her. But that does not stop Catholics from watching the show and being uh, in a Facebook groups called Catholics Who Love the Chosen. Interesting. Again, I'm an un unapologetic, you know, evangelical Christian. <laughs> um, and so I'm not Catholic um, at all. And we've talked about that on the show before. There are definitely beliefs that Catholics have that I do not share. And guess what? That's okay. <laughs> there are certain things that we can have a conversation about. And I'm not going to yell at you guys. 
And I hope that you guys don't yell at me uh, for my beliefs and my, my understanding. Um, but I love having these conversations and the, these discussions. So we're going to keep on having them. Um, I don't I just, Sorry, go ahead. I think you were about to read the one that I was going to, I was going to prompt you to just clarify the three points one more time because you said two twice. So <laughs> did I? yeah, you did. Uh, um, I, I just have, it's basically two points. The third one is basically, okay. But are you talking about top G1? Yeah. Yeah. You can just bring it up. Uh, I got to find it again. <laughs> I don't understand the criticism of it not being uh, biblical. The director tells you that this show takes artistic liberties. And yeah, there's even a disclaimer at the beginning of episode one, right? Um, they made up some backstories. The show made me study the Bible more. Yeah, I agree. And again, if we want to go through those those three points one more time, again, the criticisms are that it's not biblical. Of, of course, the show is not 100% biblical. They're making up some of the stuff. They're writing it, right? It's not all directly from scripture. And that's okay because it's not scripture. But we're going to look at the show through the lens of scripture. Uh, so that's point number one. Point number two is that there are non-Christians working on or acting in the show. <laughs> and uh, we want the show to be as best as possible. We don't want the show just to have Christians because we need Christians on the show. We want the best possible actors, the best possible cinematographers, the best possible grip guys, the best possible food caterer service people, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, we want the best of them, um, not just the Christian ones. And so that's not a requirement for the show. And when I say we, I'm not talking about like me because it's not my show, right? <laughs> um, I'm just talking about the chosen in general. And then the third point is just don't make the chosen your idol. Um, if if the chosen does go off the rails and fails you, um, be okay with that and just walk away. You know, if it's something that completely refutes scripture and it and it does that, then then that's fine because scripture still stands, right? Mm -hmm. The chosen is not scripture; it's not your God, and so that's that's point number three. It's very okay. I won't yell at you, brother. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. As someone who has Mormons in my family, I'm excited uh, that they're excited about uh, getting to know this Jesus that they've never seen, known, or understood before. So important. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of Mormons um, over over my years. And when I was in high school, actually at the front of our um, of our school, there was a large Mormon church, and so a lot of the kids that I went to school with were Mormon. And um, and so I had a lot of conversations with them, and a lot of the conversations that I've had with Mormons that have converted to Christianity, um, you know, a lot of them have had this this revelation of like there is a personal Jesus who wants to be with me that wants to walk with me. Right. And that he loves me unconditionally. And I think that that encountering that and seeing that um, in the way that the chosen has portrayed it. Right. Um, I think it would be beautiful for them for sure. So what, what means binge Jesus? So binge Jesus is, is a shirt from the chosen binge just means to watch a lot of things in succession. So when you binge something, it just means that you're, you're sitting down and you're watching all the episodes of the chosen. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a slang that they have going on um, in their, in their circles. So. Yep. Kim artist with the, with the John the Baptist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, wish I we love those. If you guys like up. our emotes, you guys can join the channel and use those emotes too during our live streams. We always love seeing those. So my sister yeah. actually made those, which is uh, amazing. So um, yeah. What what is flannel graphs? Oh, <laughs> like the you you didn't grow up in like white church, so <laughs> I mean this is really popular. Like back in the day. I'm Hispanic. Yeah, <laughs> um, you, this was very popular back in the day where they would have these big like flannel um, like felt boards where they would have like story, like Bible stories and stuff. And then they would always have puppet stages. Like we do, we have a puppet stage at our church. My dad and, used um, to do puppeteering in, in Spanish yeah. kids church. Yeah, exactly. So it was, it was just like that where okay. they would do like different Bible stories and stuff. So yes, I would much rather watch the chosen than, than those <laughs> again. <laughs> uh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I kind of like what Dwayne's saying here. If your pastor shares a story that explains a biblical principle but isn't from the Bible, is that heresy? I think not. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with those. Um, yeah. What time uh, is your Bible study on the Gospel of John? Uh, we'll probably, well, next week is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to have to decide what day we're going to do it on, but I will try to post it on this channel. Um, so make sure you're subscribed and, uh, and follow us. And then um, you'll, you'll get uh, either a notification from the community post or you'll see the, uh, the actual video. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll post it ahead of time. So you know when it's going to be scheduled to come on. Um, yeah. So that'll be a little bit later on. All right, cool. Vanessa, anything else you want to, you want to talk about share real fast? No, just make sure you keep the Bible first. Obviously, um, the Chosen is great TV. Um, it's great. It's it's great to make you think, um, but always keep the Bible first. And you know, like I don't. It's I'm I'm. We're still continuing to watch the Chosen. You don't have to like. Not everything needs to be canceled. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, not everything needs to be scrutinized. Not everything needs. You can't be like the Pharisees. You can't be like uh Shmuel, right like he's trying to yeah. find every dirty little thing right like yeah. it, it can't be like that it's it's grace and love right truth and love because yeah. there has to be truth it's not like um like brandon was saying if if the most outrageous thing happened yeah. um it's obviously truth first and that and love as well but but they're together at the same time you know what i mean yeah um yeah, it's just it's a lot of stuff that I'm I'm very passionate about, obviously. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I see 122 of you are still here right now. So please, before we go, please like this video. If you guys got something good out of this video, it, it, it means that someone else may want to watch it. So if you can like this video, that's going to help YouTube know to push it out to more people. So with every like that you do, it's going to push it out to one or two or three or four or more people. And that would really, really help us out. Um, We've been kind of dipping on our views recently, and so we're really trying to, to get out some really good content for you guys. And the more support that we can have in that, uh, it would be amazing. So thank you guys so much for being here. And, um, and yeah, don't be a Shmuel, Pegar says. Um, <laughs> I love um, one of the top comments on, on one of the videos that we watched today um, from today was um this is this is like a real life shmuel <laughs> <laughs> and so don't don't be criticizing like shmuel but if you have a good criticism let's talk about it let's bring it up and um and talk about why it may be valid uh because i like i said i don't disagree with everything that these people said the criticism that they have about the chosen i just see it in a different way and so uh yeah let's be let's be kind be nice and um and and keep on moving from there i'm glad there's a series about the authentic jesus there's hundreds of other attempts at dramatizing historical figures and events i'm so proud of the community around the chosen yeah me too we've made a lot of really good friends and um and we're going to continue to do so all right cool epic georgie we'll see you later thanks for being here <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah thanks for watching this video i hope you guys liked it thanks for being part of our community please look out for more videos more community posts and everything else like that in the upcoming weeks. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. So peace. peace.